Okay, so we're continuing um, with now coming to systems of linear equations on page 9. Okay, so a system of linear equations has this form. Uh, so there are, what is this form? So there are 1, 2, all the way down to m rows to this thing, right? And there are, in each row there is 1, 2, 3, 2, n element uh, entries added together, right? Then they are, these are the variables, x1, x2, x3, x to x, to all the way to xn. And the variables are the same in each of the m lines, right? So we have these m equations with n variables, and each variable is multiplied by a coefficient, then it's all added together and set equal to some other constant. Okay. And notice that the coefficients are labeled, they have each have two labels, right? The first label tells you what row it's in, so a11 one, one is in row 1, a21 one is in row 2, a23 is in row 2, a m3 is in row m, and the second label tells you what column it's in, uh, what column or you know what what term it is in this addition. So uh, one one is in the first column, one two is in the second column, two three is in the third column, m two is in the second column, two n is in the nth column. So we've got n columns because there's n unknowns. Um, in each column, in each row, each of the m rows, you have n entries, and so in total you have m times n entries on the left here, or m times n different coefficients, right? And we to think of each of these things, a, all these things, each aij, each xi, each bj, to think of them as, as real numbers, okay? So this is a system of m equations, right, m rows, and n unknowns, uh, n columns, um, n little x's. It can be written more compactly, because, that's good because this is a horrific way of writing it. We don't want to be writing that lots of, we don't have to be writing or writing up things like this. Written more compactly using an m by n matrix A, an n by one vector x, so that's going to be the vector of unknowns, and an m by one vector b in the following form, ax equals b. Okay, so how would that work? Well, you could have the matrix well, let's start with the ve vector x, the vector of unknowns. So that vector of unknowns, okay, I'll write x and I'll put an underline underneath it. I'm going to put underline things when I want them to be, when I mean bold, because I can't really write bold. So that x1, x2, that is to xn, that is the n by 1, that's an n by 1 vector, n rows, one column, Rows always comes first, so it's rows and columns. It's an n by 1 vector of unknowns, and then b is meant to be an m by 1 vector, so that's got m rows, that's still one column, so b should have b1 to b2 all the way to bm, and m does not have to be the same as n. Okay, and then a is an m by n matrix, so a matrix with m rows, and n columns, okay? So the entries will be these coefficients. So row one, column one will be a11. Row one, column two will be a12, and so on, until you have a1n, row one, column n, okay? Then you have row two, a21, a22, all the way till a2n. And you carry on like that, having all these rows, until you get to the last row, which is AM, that's M rows, AM1, AM2, all the way to AMN, okay? Now, if you take those, if you do matrix multiplication, which you should know already, you do AX, right? What you will get is exactly, in fact, you'll get a vector, you'll get this vector, a vector where the first row is, a vector where the first row is, sorry? A vector where the first row is this, the second row is this, and so on. A vector, it'll be, um, it'll be a 
m by one vector, right? m rows, first row, second row, all the way to the mth row. That is, this, that is what results if you times this matrix A by X. So try it and see if you don't believe me. And so when we say, if we say that equals B, the matrix B, then that's just saying that that, that that vector equals that vector, which is exactly the equation, but now expressed one matrix equation, one equation involving matrices and vectors instead of expressed as M big, um, individual equations that are not, that are just of, of numbers. Okay, so this is the x equals b. Now it says the ith entry of the vectors x and b are xi and bi respectively. So that's what we did when we, when we did this. Oh, sorry. Um, right, when we, wrote, uh, when we wrote x like this, first row x1, second row x2, and so on, nth row xn. So in general, I throw is xi. Same with b. Row 2 is b2. Row 1, b1. Row m, bm. So I throw of b is bi. Um, and then it says, oh, that's i th entry. Okay, I should have said i entry. I mean, I throw of a vector, i th entry of a vector, same thing. Now, now it says the entry in the i throw and j column of A is AIJ. That's what we have here. So, for example, row 2, column 2, that's, that's A22. Or row M, column 2, AM2. Row M, column N, AMN. Right? In general, row I, column J, AIJ. And it's convention, really, to, to when you're talking about the matrix A with a capital letter, to make to denote its entries with little, the little corresponding little letter. Okay, that's a quite a usual convention. Okay, so we have this system of linear equations. Okay, now it's a system of equations, and so it might have a solution or it might not. If it has a solution, the system of linear equations doesn't have a solution. We call it inconsistent. If it has at least one solution, we call it consistent. Okay. Can we give an example, maybe, of a system, of a system with that's inconsistent with no solutions? So we'll do this. We'll make a small system, about as small as is reasonable. So let's make it two rows and two columns. So that's two equations in two unknowns. So what if we had one times x? Let me actually call it. So the, let's say the unknowns are x one and x two, right? So they will appear the same in each row. Okay. And let's say that the unknowns. Sorry, that the that the co this, so these are the unknowns. Then let's have the 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 constants, the coefficients multiplying them. Let's have maybe two plus three, and let's have ah, I know. Let's have four plus six there. Okay, so two x one plus three x two, four x one plus six x two, and let's say that. The top one is equal to 1, and the bottom one is also equal to 1. Now, this system will not have a solution. It's inconsistent, right? I mean, we'll find, we're going we're gonna to work, we're going to develop nice ways of telling this. You might already know nice ways of telling it's inconsistent, but one thing you could do to show it's inconsistent is you could take the second equation and subtract from it two times the first equation. So I'm going to say we could take row 2, and we could subtract from it 2 times row 1, right? What would we get? We would get 0 on the left, right? And on the right, we would have minus 1, and that is a contradiction. 0 is not equal minus 1. So these two equations cannot both be true at the same time. That's an inconsistent system. It has no solutions. And we say, and I want to change it to be an example of a consistent system. So a system with at least one solution. So it could have more than one solution, but at least one. So if I just change that to a two, we'll get something like that, right? Because, for example, if I let, if I let x1 equal minus one and x2 equal one, right, then the top row, row one becomes minus two plus three, which does equal one, and the second row becomes minus four plus six, 
which does equal 2. So that is one solution. There might be other solutions. That doesn't matter for now. We just want, we just want to know, is it consistent? Does it have at least one solution? Yes, it has at least one solution. So we call it consistent. OK. Now we have a fact, uh, which might also be called a, a theorem or something like that. So the result of the matrix multiplication a times x, so that's like this, a times x, is a linear combination of the columns of a. So remember what a linear combination is from earlier in the book. It's when you have a vector times a scalar. In fact, previously we've written above, we have written the scalar in front of the vector. So you could equally well, that, that doesn't matter because a scalar times a vector, it doesn't matter how you put it. So I could put this as, you know, I could write, be writing that linear combination as x1 times a11, a21 to am1. There's no reason not to write that. And then a scalar x2 times the next vector, which is a12, and so on. Okay, all added together. That's a linear combination. It's a linear combination where the scalars now are the unknowns, which is a bit weird, but the scalars are the unknowns, and the vectors are the columns of the matrix A, right? So you can say, you can tell that this is, a, this is all the same column because the second entry for each A is the same. It's 1, 1, 1. So it means it's the first column. It's row 1 of the first column, row 2 of the first column, all the way to row M of the first column. This is the second column because the, entry, the second entry is 2. This is the nth column, the second entry is M. And you have, you have um, M of these because you end up here with A. Sorry, you have N of these because there's N columns, because there's N unknowns. And each of these vectors has M rows, just like the matrix A. OK, now I want you to check this, that this works out, that this really does work out. This really is how you personally have thought of matrix multiplication. So take your matrix A, your vector X, times it out, and check that this is what you get, and you should. This actually is a nice, to me, this is a, a better definition of matrix multiplication than one which is just purely about the elements, which is one you might be more familiar with, or certainly the one I learned first. I didn't learn this de definition first, but I now much prefer it. Anyway, when you multiply a matrix A by X, what you get is linear combination of the columns where the scalars for the linear, where the vectors for the linear combination are the columns of A, and the scalars for the linear combination are the entries on, of X. Okay. And now it says that uh, this follows obviously from the definition of matrix multiplication, but despite how obvious it is, it is still an important result. We'll use it a number of times later in this course, so don't forget about it. So personally, I advise you from now on, once you check that this works out, is consistent with your def, your how, whatever definition you've already seen of matrix multiplication, I would personally then adopt this as a definition of matrix multiplication. It's much nicer to me. If you can't see why yet, then leave it and maybe one day later, later in this course, maybe you'll agree with me that this is a nice definition of matrix multiplication. Okay. Now we have another fact. The system AX equals B is consistent if and only if, uh, now if and only if is abbreviated by IFF. If and only if, that's the thing that will occur a lot in maths and in this course, if and only if, also known as if. There's, what it means basically is this, okay? It means an arrow going in both directions. It means implies and is implied by. It means that the two statements that it connects are equivalent. So it means that this, this, this statement, the system AX equals B, is consistent, is equivalent to the statement that the vector B is a linear combination of the columns of the matrix A. By equivalent, I mean they are true at, exact, they are true at exactly the same time. They are false at exactly the same time, right? If one is true, the other is true. If one is false, the other is false. It goes both directions. You get arrows that go in one direction only, right? That would be the system is consistent only if the vector B is linear combination, right? That would be, oh, that would be the arrow in that direction. You, have, you could have the system is consistent if the vector B is linear combination. Oh, no, sorry. If would be an arrow going in that direction. Only if would be an arrow going that direction. Frankly, I advise you to not bother thinking about, about the English meaning of if and only if. 
and just whenever you see if and only if, or if this IFF, just in your mind, just think, oh, that's this double arrow thing. It means that the two statements it connects are logically equivalent. They are true or false at the same time. OK, that's logic. Now let's get to the actual content of what of what of this this uh, this theorem. The system a x equals b is consistent, i.e., it has at least one solution, if and only if the vector b is a linear combination of the columns of the matrix a. Well, of course that's true because if the equation is a x equals b, that's a x, right? But a x is this linear combination, right? So if that's to equal b, the vector b, then we're saying, all we're saying is that if b equals ax, then it is this linear combination, that, that there is some values for x1, x2, and xn, at least one value for, at least one way of choosing a value for x1, x2, and all the way to xn, I one way of choosing the vector x such that this equation is true, such that this linear combination does equal b. The vector b is a linear combination of columns of the matrix A. Okay, that's, that's all it's saying.